Welcome to Mr. Fisher Flip's third grade math. Well today we're going to be doing Unit 2 Lesson 10 and our objective today is to write first step questions for two step problems. Meaning we're going to have story problems that are real life that have us doing two steps before we can figure out the correct answer. And so I want you to focus on breaking it into parts and it'll all make sense. Well with our lesson in class we're going to be count bys, multiplications and divisions. We're going to be using the order of operations to write and evaluate expressions and we're going to write those um, first step questions into two step word problems. Well to get us warmed up let's start by looking at Mr. Raj's garage. He has lots of bicycles and he has one tricycle. Let's see if you can figure this one out. If you want to stop you can or you may do it with me. Doing it with me we can take the three bikes and each of those three bikes has two wheels on it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so three times two equals six. And then we can add plus three for the tricycle. Another way we could do that is just to count all of the wheels that are on those three bikes and that one tricycle. What is our answer? If we take erase, we find that nine wheels is the correct answer. Is that what you got? As you can see, that warms us up because we were doing two steps. Well, today our main focus will be working on operation. Order of operations is being able to look at our operation backpack and decide whether we're gonna use adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and these parentheses will come into play because it'll help us to separate the problems into two steps. Those parentheses are an important part of this operation backpack. But the three, four main operations are adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Let's see how good you are at practicing. Hopefully you've been practicing a lot. And what I'd like you to do is make sure you're practicing those sixes and those square numbers. Let's look at these square numbers first. 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16. And if you practice those, you're going to find that those numbers come a lot easier. Also practice it by mixing it up. 100 divided by 10 equals 10. Don't forget to mix it up with times tables. So you're not always doing it in order. That way you will know those multiplications automatically. Skip counting. We don't do that too often because you guys, for some reason, don't like to do them. But skip counting helps us to go and learn the eights. So if you're practicing, one of the ways you can do that is get out a multiplication table and just go down the row. So if we're doing 8, so we can go 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. And that helps us understand that by reading just those red numbers, we're actually looking at skip counting. Practice doing that. Here's page 93. If we look at page 93, you'll see that all of these are on that page that you're supposed to take home. If you put it into a plastic sleeve, you'll be able to keep it and preserve it a little bit better. Well, let's practice by looking at a model. And by looking at this model, we're going to look at the reason why we do Operation Backpack. It's called, Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally. Please is the parentheses. Excuses exponents, which you'll get into later in fourth grade and fifth grade. My is multiplication. I'm going to use this as my multiplication. Division, addition, and subtraction. So we're going to be looking at that and finding that our equations need to be placed in order. So when we go to do an equation, we don't start with the subtraction. We start with those parts of the equation that are in parentheses first. Then we look at those parts that need to be timesed, those parts that need to be divided, those parts that need to be added, and then finally we subtract. Let's see how that works. This exercise involves subtraction and multiplication. And so we're just looking at these two operations, the multiplication and the subtraction. Let's see how well we do. Let's look at these two questions right here. What do you get if you subtract first and then multiply? If we subtracted first, 10 minus 3 would equal 7, and 7 times 2 equals 14. So our answer for that first one would be 
14. Well, now let's see what would happen if you multiply first and then subtract. 3 times 2 is 6. 10 minus 6 equals 4. So which one of these is correct? If we do the order of operation, we're going to do parentheses first, then multiplication and division, and then adding and subtraction. If we were looked at this, we would see that multiplying, we did multiplying first on this one, and then we subtracted. So we followed this order, 3 and 4. So our answer should be, if we did it correctly, is 4. So our answer should have been 4. Let's look at the problem as it should be written according to the book. They put parentheses first. We're going to do the parentheses first, and then we're going to do the times and then we're going to do the subtraction. But because it's in parentheses first, we do the subtraction. 10 minus 3 is 7. 7 times 2 equals 14. Our new answer, based on using the parentheses, is 14. So be careful as you do this, but remember our operation backpack. We always go with parentheses, then multiplying and dividing, then adding, then subtracting. Remember that as you go th through our lesson today. Let's do that as a practice. Let's find out what this is trying to say. Now, I've always tried to tell you that there's a big magic mirror right here. So if we cut that equal sign and did everything on this side, it would equal the same on this side. So 4 times 3 plus 6 equals 4 times something plus 4 times something. So if we did our order of operation, we'd go the parentheses first. 3 plus 6 equals 9. And 4 times 9 equals 36. That doesn't seem to fit right there. Well, we want you to see that this 3 actually goes in here, and that 6 goes in here. And let's see if we get the same answer. If we go 4 times 3 plus 4 times 6, we're going to get 4 times 3 equals 12 plus 4 times 6 equals 24. And notice I did follow the order of operation. I did the times first, and then I did the adding next. So 12 plus 4 24 equals 4 plus 2 is 6, and then 1 plus 110 plus 2 tens equals 36. So if we did this correctly, that 36 does equal that 36 does equal 4 times 3 plus 6 because 4 times 9 equals the same as 4 times 3 plus 4 times 6, and that equals 36. So our answer is 3 and 6 in those two boxes. Let's look at this as we move on towards working with real life story problems. Each week Marta earns $10 babysitting. She always spends $3 and saves the rest. How much does she save in 8 weeks? Well, what is the first step question and answer for this, for this problem? We need to know how much does Marta earn each week. She earns $10. So that's our first step is right there, that she earns that much money. What's the next step? Well, the next step is trying to solve that problem. We want to know how much she saved in eight weeks. But she always spent three dollars and saves the rest. So here's one example of doing that. We can go ten minus three dollars each week times eight because she worked for eight weeks. And so if we go ten minus three is seven. And so I wrote it right here. Then I took seven times eight and that equaled 56. Another way you could have done this is you could have found the total and subtracted the number of weeks. And so one way we could have written this is we could have put parentheses around the times tables and then we could subtract them. If we take 8 times 10, we get 80, and 8 times 3 equals 24. Subtract 80 from 24 and we get 56. And what did I actually forget on this? I forgot to label it. I need to put that dollar sign there. $56. Well, we've done a couple of problems together. Now let's see if you can do a couple of problems on your own. This one is... There's two problems here. We'll do one together and we'll uh, let you do one. But you got to figure out that each of these problems is a two-step word problem. So let's look at this. I'm going to do Nadia's. Nadia counted 77 birds on the pond. 53 were ducks and the rest were geese. So if I take the total number, 77, and subtract 53, I can find out how many geese there were. Now, I need to find out how many were in each flock eventually. But let's find out how many were just geese because we want to get rid of the ducks. 7 minus 3 is 4, and 7 minus 5 is 2. 24 geese. But the geese flew away in four equal flocks. So we need to take 24, and what do we need to do? 24 out of 4. So we need to write that as a division problem. 24 divided by a lesser number equals the quotient. The 4 goes into 24 how many times? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 
24 equals 6. Six geese were in each flock. Well, I'll let you figure out Zoe's problem, but remember it's two steps. Figure out this part first, the four slices and the two melons on each plate, and then figure out how many she prepared with five plates. So each of those plates had four apples and two melons. Next question. See if you can stop this and figure out the answer. Okay, remember your order of operation. Which part would you do first? The part in parentheses, correct? And then you take and multiply. Okay, if we do the parentheses first, our answer is nine. Five minus two is three and three times three equals nine. Here's another problem I want to see if you can do on your own. It's a two-step word problem. Okay, to figure this one out, on his way to school, Kevin counted how many bikes and how many road bikes? Are you going to add or subtract those two? How many wheels are were on the bikes altogether? So to write that, you need to make sure you write five mountain bikes plus three road bikes, and then you need to times it by how many wheels are on a bike. Usually two, okay? Well, there are. Bicycles, by means two. Five plus three times two. Did you get this answer? Sixteen wheels. Now notice they put parentheses around the five plus three. If you don't put the parentheses, <laughs> you most likely will get it wrong. You'll get it wrong if I'm correcting it. Next question. I want you to remember that a question, when we have a question on a, t on a test, why do we need that question? A question helps us to know something. We want to know the answer. When you see a question, don't get frustrated. Just realize that it's helping you understand. And here's the end. Got three extra problems for you to do. One with uh, Mr. Day planting a garden. One writing an equation using multiplication and subtraction, which the answer is 36. And how many points did Amber score? That's the end of our lesson today. Thank you and good night.